Praise the name of Jesus. I want to say thank you to everyone who has put in one thing or the other to bring this conference 2021 to reality. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will reward you. I want to thank Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Olashore for this hand of fellowship and the privilege of being a part of this year's conference. The Lord will continue to enlarge your coast. The Lord will give you more space to do more exploits. The Lord will cause this ministry to grow from glory to glory. And all that your heart desires to do concerning the work in your hands, God will enable you. God will empower you. God will grant you unction and utterance in all that you do. I want to say thank you and thank you once again. Um, tonight, we're talking about unique and graced. Unique and graced. And the anchor scripture that was given to me is Proverbs 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We appreciate you. We thank you because your word will heal, your word will deliver. We thank you because of your spirit that is with us in this meeting. Lord, I pray for those who are brokenhearted in this meeting tonight, that your hand will reach them and you will heal them. We pray for those who are physically sick. Lord, we ask that the balm of Gilead be available for them. We decree healing to every sickness in the name of Jesus. To those who are troubled in their heart, Father, we ask for your peace. The peace of God that passes all human understanding. And whatever might be of concern to you that you have brought in today's meeting, I pray that the Spirit of the living God will breathe upon you, give you answers to those questions, and give you peace to the troubled areas of your lives. Father, we thank you because you are prayer answering God. We thank you because you are the God who knows our end from the beginning. We thank you because you are faithful in all your ways. We give you praise. We give you glory. We join the host of heaven to say there is no one like unto you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Unique and graced. To be unique means to be one of a kind. And to be graced means unmerited favor. So because you are unique and graced, uh, that shows you that you are very expensive. You are very expensive. You are priceless. You are far above rubies. And I want to say that when you understand your uniqueness, it gives you confidence and it gives you strength to forge ahead. The Bible says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Money should never be the bait in anything you do. Money should never be the bait. Money should not be the determinant factor of any action that you take because you are one of a kind. You are unique. And you'll be asking what should be the purpose? What should be, uh, the, what, what, what should be my uniqueness? Your uniqueness is your spirituality. Your uniqueness is your spirituality. And so if you understand that your uniqueness and your worth is your spirituality, it helps you give more attention and prominence to your purpose in life. Purpose is the determinant factor in all areas of life for a child of God. It is purpose. It is not money. In your career, you should, you should find purpose within it. Why am I doing what I'm doing? 
How many lives is it going to affect? How will I be a blessing to this generation through this career? Your motivating factor should never be money because you are more than rubies, far above rubies. You must step up. You must step up from the level of money to the level of purpose. You know, so many times we, we find younger ones saying, I want, to, I want to study this course because there's money in it. That's a wrong analogy. Ah, I've heard that people who do this kind of job, they have a lot of money. That's a wrong analogy. Do not allow money to be your motivation. It has to be purpose. That's your uniqueness. The world is filled with so many people who are just walking aimlessly, looking for money by all means, thrashing their head. Only few people are looking for purpose. And those are the people that end up to become relevant and impactful. Those are the people that the world ends up knowing. People who lived for purpose. And there's no way you live for purpose that God will not prosper you. That's your uniqueness. In your career, make sure purpose is what determines whatever you do. In your family, let purpose be the binding force, not money. You know, in families now, we have different kinds of strata and structures. This one is well, the account, this is the only person I can relate with. No. It should, everything should be purpose. Everything should be purpose. In your love relationship, because I know this gathering is mostly for mature singles. In your love relationship, your motivation should be purpose and not money. And not money. We have to subdue the sting of money. If we don't deliberately do that, you will also be caged like the people in the world. All that they are living for is money. The killings here and there, it's because of money. The gun battle here and there, it's because of money. Let's live beyond that and leave a legacy behind. You hear young ladies saying, ah, that guy does not have anything. No, 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 no. I can't, I can't flow with that kind of a person. Ah, he comes from a poor family. Hmm? I cannot. <laughs> Those things are not what you should hold on to if you understand your uniqueness. In your love relationship, money should not be the factor. It should be purpose. And that's why I always tell people everywhere that the Bible says, the Bible told Adam in Genesis chapter 1, I will give you a help that is suitable for the assignment I've given to you. So for you as a woman, as a lady, your prayer should be, Father, give me a partner that I can help. That I can help to serve God. I can help to fulfill purpose. I can help to bring into reality his dreams. You are a helper. You are not a leper. Don't become a leper. It is lepers that look for rich men to marry because they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't have confidence. They don't understand their uniqueness. So they are looking for somebody to them that will be their savior. And those marriages end up crashing. And when they don't crash, if you see what the ladies go through. I heard recently of a man, a, a, a man who has about seven wives, young, young girls, Young, young, yellow, yellow girls. And they said in that, in that uh, mansion, they have cell. They have two cells. In other words, uh, they have uh, two prisons <laughs> where any wife that misbehaves, the man will tell the, the um, security office to lock her in the guard room. I said, in this Nigeria. Ah. And the girls are flocking to marry this man. 
they have uh, guard rooms in the mansion. We are depending on the the size of your fence <laughs> will determine the number of days you will spend in that guard room. They said some of them are there for two weeks. Anyone that misbehaves, uh, you know, can you imagine? Is that the kind of marriage you want? Because what you were looking for was money. Money without peace. Money without rest. Money that takes away and rubbishes your uniqueness. Is that what you want? Ladies, we have to begin to realign our thinking. You don't go for money. You go for purpose. You don't go for money, you go for purpose. And most of the marriages that are doing well today, let's be sincere with ourselves. Most of the marriages that are doing well today are marriages where the young man and the young lady were friends and together they grew up. Those are relationships that, you know, they, they can vouch that they are married. There are a lot of sick marriages that your friends are using to oppress you. Don't mind them. It is when you live with them that you know that, no, no, no. Uh, this marriage has, has rubbished this lady's uniqueness. I heard of, a, of uh, maybe they call them rich, but anybody who does not have manners is actually not rich to me. They said this, uh, this man called his driver to slap his wife. To slap his wife. Can you imagine? The driver said, Ah, Oga, I know if do am. The man said, If you don't do it, this is the end of your job. And the, the guy did not want to lose his job. And he slapped Madame because that was the instruction of Oga. Is that the kind of marriage you want? No. Don't let marriage rubbish your uniqueness. Don't let. I believe in marriage. Marriage is good. Marriage is God's institution. Marriage is the only avenue through which God wants to uh, replenish the earth. Marriage is God's idea. But any marriage that will deform you, I don't think that's a marriage. If marriage will deform you, if marriage will put maggots upon your destiny, then don't go for it. It's hard to say. But that's the truth because of the things that are happening and are happening. Can you imagine my husband telling his driver to slap me? Ah. These are strange things that are happening. Be confident in your uniqueness. Once you do not step down, you know, when you use money to judge or determine whatever you want to become in life, you are stepping down from your uniqueness. You are stepping down from being a human being. You are stepping down from being a human being. I want to help us to see three areas of uniqueness which should always be your driving force. Three areas of uniqueness. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. These are three script scriptures that we want to bring out three areas that helps you to remain unique. Number one is for you to understand that you are the image of God. When you look at the mirror, that is God that you are seeing. You are beautiful. You are unique. You know, when you do your, uh, your thumbprint, there are no two thumbprints 
that are the same, not even identical twins. The thumbprints are different. You are unique. You are made in the image of God. You are beautiful. If you are tall, you are beautiful. If you are short, you are beautiful. If you are light in complexion, you are beautiful. You don't need to bleach. It's inferiority complex that makes people bleach. And it's not so common now that even men have started bleaching. What a horror. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. If you are dark in complexion, you are beautiful. Don't bleach your skin. That is God. That's, you see, when you understand and you accept that you are made in the, uh, in the image of God, it gives you confidence. It gives you confidence. You are unique. So let nobody say, uh, if you want to grow shorter, use this. If you want to grow taller, use it. You don't need it. You don't need it. I've been doing a series of recordings of messages that I have abroad. And uh, these are the lines of teaching that the Lord has been um, helping me to emphasize this being in the image likeness of God. You are beautiful. <laughs> my, one of my friends, she stole and she told me, she said, ah, since I clocked 50, I've been falling down and falling down. What exactly is happening? I said, because you are tall. That's why you are falling down. Me, I'm short. I can't fall down because I'm not very far from the ground. So to fall down is not a, we don't fall down because I'm short. God knows why I'm short. And I'm beautiful as I'm short. My ladies in church, every Sunday they come, oh, mama, oh, your, your, your dress is beautiful. I said, no, it's not my dress that is beautiful. It is me that is beautiful. Because you have to, you have to keep reactivating your uniqueness. You are unique. Don't let anybody say you have to be like this. You have to, no, 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 no. A lady was telling me in UK that she, she applied for a modeling job. And when she went for the interview, she had sent her pictures and all that. When she went for the interview, one of the people, one of the men, the white men on the panel said, uh, we would have loved to give you this job, but we will appreciate if you can tone your skin a little. Just tone it to be lighter. So I said, when she came back and she was telling me, I said, so what do you want to do? She said she wants to go ahead to tone because she loves modeling. I said, you know what God will do for you? If you tone, if you go there again, they will say they don't need somebody who is light. I said, see what God will do for you. It is God, not the devil. It will, it will, it will be God that will stand against you. Don't turn because one, one, one man who is confused. Must you be a white person to be a model? Are there no black models? I said, don't let anybody uh, destroy your uniqueness. Don't stay in what God has put around you in form of beauty. And to my shock, the following year when I went to UK, she was gisting me. She said, Mommy, thank you for that advice. He said, Mommy, do you know the person that they finally took was a black girl from Kenya? Very black from Kenya. That was the girl they took. I said, see what the devil wanted to do in your life. The devil would have destroyed you because you would have gone to tone and yet they will still not pick you. You are, you are unique. You are beautiful. Some years ago, a girl in um, 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 a school in Ibadan, one of the high schools in the, in the city, committed suicide because the friend said her nose was big. And I said, what, what kind of thing is this? She committed suicide. And she wrote a letter. She's a child, she's a daughter of a professor. So it's not that she comes from a, a, a house where they are not learned. She wrote that, my friends have been laughing to, at me since I came to this school. And I can't handle it anymore. Mommy, daddy, goodbye. Can you imagine? Because her friend said her, her nose is big. Please. Maybe when we get to the Mother's Summit 
tomorrow, I will encourage the mothers, build up the confidence of your children before they go out. Tell them that that big nose is the size of God's nose. When people say you have K-leg, tell them that is how the leg of God is. God too has K-leg. That's why you have K-leg. Be confident in your uniqueness. If somebody says your hair is like that of a rabbit, and that's how God's hair is. Let them know that you know who you are. Let nobody trouble you. Paul said, let nobody trouble me. I carry upon me the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's a, a lot of problem with people who are young. People who are young, they don't believe in themselves. They don't appreciate their uniqueness. Number two thing that will help you to understand and appreciate your uniqueness is the fact that you are made in the likeness of God. Likeness of God. That means you are God. As a lady, you are God. If a human gives birth to, gives birth, it gives birth to a human like him. If a goat gives birth, it gives birth to a goat. If a lion gives birth, it gives birth to another lion. If a lizard gives birth, it gives birth to another lizard. I've never seen a lion giving birth to a lizard. I've never seen a crocodile giving birth to a baboon. And I've never seen a human giving birth to a snake. Never. You give back to your likeness. So when the Bible tells us that we are made in the likeness of God, we are, we are God. The day you got born again, it's like God gave back to another God. And the Holy Spirit took your delivery. God gave back to another God. You must understand that uniqueness. That you are God in your own right. Don't be intimidated by anything. You have dominion. You have authority. You must begin to display the God side of you. In your offices, when people are sick, lay hands on them. The Bible says you will lay hands on the sick, the sick will recover. In your community, people who need prayers, pray for them. Before I got married, I was all over the place. I was always asking. When I get to bus stop, sometimes I see somebody beside me and say, uh, Auntie, do you any area of prayer? Do you need prayer? I want to pray for you. They look at me funny, but they eventually say, okay, pray. Is there anything you want me to pray for you about? I go everywhere. When I want to buy things in some small, small shops in those days, I say, Mama, is there any prayer point you have so that we can pray together? Ah, oh, Mommy, my daughter, I have. Oh, hey, help me to pray for my children. Help me to... I will hold hands and will pray. And the following day when I'm passing, they will be calling me. Hey, hey, see, see me. Hey, that prayer we pray though. God has answered though. I, because when I saw that I'm, I'm God myself, I began to display that God-like nature. I began to trouble the devil everywhere. That was what I was doing because I understood my uniqueness. I understood that the grace of God was upon my life to be able to activate the God nature inside of me. You must begin to take authority. You don't wait until you are married before you display the God nature. No, that's, that's not it. Begin to display God. It is in the process of displaying God that you will meet the man that wants you. Every man is looking for a woman who is God. One man, I was talking to one, <laughs> one uh, police officer. He said, they were talking. So he said, ah, the reason why I married a nurse was so that I won't die. Oh. That's why I married a nurse. It's not that I love nurses, but ah, I think when I'm sick, she will save me. Ah, I said, <laughs> I said that's the reason why you married a nurse. To show you that even when men want to choose, they're looking for something, something higher. Something that will preserve their lives. That's what the average man is looking for. So why don't you bring out your cloak of God? Begin to wear it. And the man God has for you will meet you on the path. And start competing over eyelashes, competing over nails, competing over ephemeral things. I love beauty. But beauty must not erode the God nature 
that you have. It must not erode it. We are made in the likeness of God. And the number three thing you see in that Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28, uh, 28 um, emphasis. It says, and God bless them. You are blessed. You are blessed. That's your, that's your uniqueness. You are blessed not because you have money, but because you have a promising future. You are blessed because money is coming. You are blessed. Once you have this understanding and you know that you are blessed, it becomes a platform on which riches, prosperity will be able to rest on. But when you are not blessed, even when riches and prosperity comes, it will dry up. If you are not blessed, <laughs> nothing will be able, nothing will survive. They will come and you lose them. They will come, you lose them. I've had people who've had boyfriends and at the point where they are now becoming serious, the guy will leave because they have not been able to accept the fact that they are blessed. Keep telling yourself, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Let that be the platform on which every other thing will rest. When, when, when riches, when um, a partner comes on the platform of blessing, you find out that there will be an attraction. There will be an attraction. But when a partner comes on the platform of curses, you're under a curse, nothing will stay. No matter the number of billions they give you in, on contract, it won't stay. You end up using it for sickness. You'll be using it for friends who are in trouble. You'll be using it for different kinds of stupid things. But keep telling yourself, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You are not blessed because you want to marry. That's not it. Before marriage at all, begin to lay that foundation. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. So anybody that will not come will be somebody that will not de destroy your blessing. Because if you have been saying, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, uh, even the devil knows that a cursed person cannot walk into your life. Because you have laid the solid foundation of blessing. And I pray for you that every curse hanging upon your life, as a mature single. Every curse that is from the family lineage that will not allow you to marry on time, we curse it and I judge it in the name of Jesus. Every curse that anyone has spoken against your marital settlement, I return the arrow back to sender in the name of Jesus. You shall be married. Your land shall be married. The Lord will connect you to the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. You are unique. You are not a trash. So anything that is trash will not come in your direction. Anyone that will deform your uniqueness will not come in your direction. God will expose them and God will show you his favor even in this journey of singlehood. Add the spiritual dimension to everything you do as a single sister. Don't be carnal. Don't be carnal. It is God that makes choices for you. Stop making carnal choices. David was in the wilderness when God sent a prophet and said, go and anoint a king in the house of Jesse. And Samuel got there, Samuel was carried away. When Eliab came, he said, oh, this is the king. And God said, no, don't anoint that one. I have rejected him. He called um, Abinadab, he called the others. God said, no, ask him. He still has a son. And David faced, um, I mean, Samuel faced J.C. and said, are these all your sons? And J.C. said, oh, there's one. There's one that is taking care of my, of my ranch in the wilderness. And Samuel said, get him. Until he comes, we will not sit down. And they went to bring David. And when David got there, someone said, God told Samuel, this is he, anoint him. I want to say this, that you don't need carnality to work out relationship. Just stay serving God. Just stay living the God nature in you. Just stay developing your spiritual life. And on that journey, God will give you a perfect partner. God will give you a perfect partner. There was a time when I was single. 
my mother was really disturbing me because some of my friends who were married, they would bring their children to our house that my mother should help them to take care of the children and all that. And my mother would say, eh, look at your colleagues. These are their children. Go and wash that nappy. If that is what you want to use your own life to do, to be serving your colleagues. She would say different kinds of things to me. And at a point, I made up my mind that I was going to get an apartment outside. I tried to get an apartment. Each time I would go to meet the landladies or landlord, they would say, you're a single sister. No, we don't want you to bring a, a brothel into this house. We don't want a single lady here. I said, is, it, is this how difficult it is? And I would cry and cry and cry. My mother kept taunting me, but I kept growing in the faith. I kept growing in the faith. And the scripture that God gave me, God told me, I will perfect all that concerns you. I will perfect all that concerns you. Psalm 136. I will perfect all that concerns you. And I held on to the scripture that God is going to perfect everything that concerns me. God is going to perfect everything that concerns me. And I kept growing. I kept going for evangelism. Everything that was being done in the fellowship, I was doing. I was paying more than more, more than 60% tithe. I was paying tithe. I wasn't paying 10%. I was paying above 50%. Not because I wanted to get married, but because I loved the Lord. Because I loved the Lord. By the time my husband proposed to me, he was also a member of the fellowship, but I was not looking in that direction. Because in my carnal mind, I wanted somebody different. But when he came to propose to me, and um, I fasted. First time I will fast. I will fast there for three days. And the Lord said, that is your perfection. When I heard that is your perfection, it connected me to the scripture God gave to me. I will perfect all that concerns you. I said, this is God speaking. And I said, yes. And here am I today. I have never regretted this marriage for one day. I have never regretted this marriage. I have not been deformed in this marriage. I have not been mangled. Some women have been mangled in their marriage. That when you see them, you won't believe this is the same person you used to know. Some women have been deformed in their marriage. Some women are, are in sorrow in their marriage. Marriage is not supposed to be like that. Marriage is to, is to sharpen your uniqueness. Marriage is to make you more beautiful. Marriage is to make purpose, you know, to, to become more real in your life. That's what marriage is for. Marriage is not to bring you down. And I pray that as you, as you begin to take the spiritual dimension of your being seriously, God will perfect all that concerns you. God will perfect all that concerns you. Your spirituality is your uniqueness. Hold on to that. Your spirituality is your uniqueness. Marriage is not your uniqueness. You know, some ladies pride with marriage. And before they know what is happening, the marriage crashes. You don't pride with things that are carnal, things that are ephemeral. You don't pride over such things. Don't use your marriage to, 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 to snob or to spite or to provoke other people. Because at the end of it all, there's no marriage in heaven. Marriage is just to fulfill the purpose here on earth. There's no marriage in heaven. So don't allow people to use their marriages to mock you. Don't allow people to use their marriages to deform you. Stand straight with your heads high up. Be confident. You are unique. My time is coming. We just did a marriage for one of our sisters at the age of 48, about three weeks ago. At the age of 48, she's never been married. So don't let anybody tell you, I, 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 I met a woman of God recently. She got married at 56. She's never been married. She got married at 56. The one that even shocked me, <laughs> the one that shocked me was one of my sister's friends. The, the, the two of them got married at 60. The, the man and the woman never been married. Who told you God is still not doing strange? God is still doing strange things. God is still doing strange things. Don't let anybody discourage you. Just take up your spiritual guard. 
and keep growing and keep building the kingdom for God. And God will meet you on that path. And I pray that the Almighty God will help you. The Lord will settle you. The Lord will empower you. The Lord will make your voice to be heard in his kingdom. And together you will build the kingdom along with God. You are unique. You are unique. That's why you are not a goat. That's why you are not a, a, an animal. That's why you are not a rat. A rat. That's why you are not an ant. You are a human being. And you are unique. And you stay in that position and don't let anybody destroy your uniqueness. You are one of a kind. When people try to pull you down, tell them I'm one of a kind. When people mock you, tell them you are one of a kind. When people laugh at you, tell them you are one of a kind. When all your friends who are married tell you you are nobody, tell them I'm one of a kind. That's what I used to tell my friends before I got married. I always tell them, I don't care. I'm going to be happily married. I'm going to be happily married and I'm going to have two boys. I said, I, I, that one I know. They will laugh at me and say, just bring the man for you that don't have any boyfriend. You are talking about being happily married. I said, because I've seen the end. I've seen the end from the beginning. That's the God we serve. And to my surprise, I'm happily married and I have two boys. I wanted to have an extra girl, but it did not come. So... All the things I said, even before I got born again, is what I have. I'm going to be happily married. Those are the things you speak to yourself because you are a God. You attract the things you want. You don't allow the things that you don't want to be coming into your life anyhow. No. That's why you don't allow men to just be coming to window shop and destroy your uniqueness. No. You begin to say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. When you say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, it is a blessed man you are going to attract. The blessed man might not be rich yet, but he's on his way to riches. I pray that this conference will be a memorable one for you. I pray that this conference will leave you with so much confidence and impact. I pray that this conference will spell you up to your purpose in life. I pray that this conference will bring out the spiritual worth that you really are to your generation. I pray that your voice on earth will not be drowned. You are unique and you are graced. And that grace will envelope you everywhere you go. The Lord will shield you. The Lord will protect you. In these turbulent times, God will keep you. He will cause his face to shine over you in the name of Jesus. Once again, I want to say thank you to Pastor Mrs. Olashuri. And I pray that the joy of this convention shall remain with you all. And I pray also that all that you desire... In bringing this conference together, God will grant you. You will see the travail of your soul and you will be satisfied in the name of Jesus. Your children will give you joy. Your seeds will not dry up. God will expand your ministry. The dreams in your heart will come to reality in the name of Jesus. God bless you and thank you.